Hello and uh, welcome to part one of the Eng BITSAT English proficiency class. It's approximately 45 days to the BITSAT exam and now is the time to look at the English and reasoning section. In this video, we will look at the English section first, its importance, what to expect in terms of the pattern of questions and how to prepare so that you get most of the questions right. Without further ado, let's get right into the section and see the details. As you all know, there are 15 questions in the English section. 15 questions translates to 45 marks because uh, for every right answer, you get three marks in the BITSAT exam. That is 10% of the maximum marks. 45 marks corresponds to 10% of the maximum marks, which is 450. And if your target is around 300, it's 15% of your target. And also, if you want to access the bonus questions, you should answer all the questions in the entire exam. That is, you have to answer all the 150 questions, including your English questions, right? So if you're if you're targeting those bonus questions, then you'll have to ensure that all your English questions are right. English is another advantage. All the questions, barring comprehension, can be answered in no time. So you make substantial time savings here. Next question is, how should you prepare? But before that, there is a basic question. Should you prepare at all? Because there are some people who feel that even without preparation, you will get most of the questions right. That is fine because most of the questions are easy and you can answer the questions without too much of difficulty. However, if you're looking at maximizing your score, if, you're, if you don't want to take chances, then I think you should spend some time in terms of preparing for the exam. What, what should you do in terms of preparing for the exam? The first thing that you should do is to get exposed to the question patterns. Sir. Because if you know what to expect, that is half your preparation done. Also, when you examine the question patterns, you will know whether you are comfortable with the questions or not. And if you are not comfortable with the question pattern, perhaps you can spend a little time in terms of doing some practice so that you become perfect in that particular question pattern. After this, follow it up with some short exercises. Short exercises in the sense you need to take around 15 to 20 minutes, not more than that. You will have to be very, very careful of this one particular aspect, which is do not overdo the English and reasoning sections. Because all said and done, your selection into BITSAT in, or in, in BITS is dependent upon your performance in maths, physics and chemistry. What the English and reasoning sections will do is to decide your branch. So do not overdo it. The exercise should be for no more than 15 to 20 minutes. And I would suggest you should take these exercises to break the monotony. What do I mean by that? Suppose you do say four hours of non-stop maths and you want to take a break from this uh, before you start with physics or chemistry. What you could do is you can start off a small English exercise, complete in 15, 20 minutes, get refreshed and go back to your physics or chemistry section. That is the way in which you should approach the BITSAT English preparation. Let us now look at the syllabus. As per the syllabus, official syllabus published by the BITSAT authorities, your English syllabus consists of four parts. One is vocabulary or word related and the remainder of this video will be dedicated to questions dealing with the vocabulary section. Then you have reading comprehension, you are given a passage and you are given certain questions following the passage. What you are supposed to do is read the passage and answer the questions on the basis of what is contained in the passage. Most of the questions are fact based or factual. That means that once you read the passage, you will know what it is based on and the questions will be directly related to whatever is contained in the passage. There may on occasion be a question related to some inference. That means you need to read the passage and infer from the passage and answer the question. There may also be one odd question uh, related to vocabulary. That means uh, a particular word in the passage will be underlined and uh, you're supposed to find the meaning of the word in the context in which the word is used in the passage. Then you have composition and 
composition deals mostly with rearrangement of uh, sentences or uh, rearrangement of sentences to form a coherent paragraph. In the subsequent video, we will see uh, how to deal with this question pattern. Finally, you have grammar. Most of uh, Bitsat grammar deals with articles, propositions, tenses, question tags, voice, active and passive voice, transformation of sentences, mostly direct and indirect speech, uh, subject verb agreement, phrasal verbs and that like. So what we will do is in the subsequent videos, we will spend some time in terms of each of these uh, uh, question types. This video is dedicated to vocabulary questions. We will now examine the various question patterns in the vocabulary section. The first one is synonyms. Synonyms means words of the same meaning. So let's look at one question. Uh, find the synonym of the word given here. The word that is given here is infringe. And then you've got five options. You got to identify a word which is closest in meaning to the word that is given that is infringe. So what is the meaning of infringe? Infringe means breaking the terms of law or contract. So based on that, just see what could be the answer here. I'll give you a couple of seconds to identify the answer. So did you get violet as the answer? If it is violet, then that is the answer because infringe means some kind of violation. For example, coffee, copyright infringement. Uh, suppose you uh, watch a video which is pirated. So what are you doing basically? You are infringing the copyright owned by somebody. So this is some kind of a violation. So infringe, the answer for this, the synonym for this is violate. If you look at persuade, what is the meaning of persuade? Urge someone to do something uh, by giving them a reason. Uh, nurture, on the other hand, means to take care of or uh, protect or feed somebody. So nowhere close to the word that we have in mind, which is infringe. So answer here is for violate. Next question type is antonym, where we are dealing with opposite. You are given a word, you will have to find the opposite of the word that is given. So let's look at a question type here. Find the antonym of the word given, sporadic. All right. And you've got five options. I'll give you a couple of seconds to answer this question. So did you get that? Did you get the answer? What is the meaning of sporadic? Sporadic means occurring at irregular intervals, scattered or isolated. So for example, sporadic fighting broke out or sporadic gunfire was heard. So what it means is basically occasional, infrequent or irregular. So what could be the antonym for this? Yeah, answer is three, which is constant. Okay, among the uh, five options there, you've got two words uh, which are not so easy. One is florid. Florid means, you know, ruddy or red complexion. Uh, florid also means excessively elaborate, like for example, a florid design, something which is very, very elaborate. The other one is intrepid. Intrepid means fearless, an intrepid warrior, for example. Okay, uh, let's move on to the next question type. This is contextual meaning. Contextual meaning is like the synonyms. Here you are given a sentence. Uh, then there will be a word which is highlighted. And what you need to do is find the meaning of the word in the context in which the word is used in the sentence. So it is like a synonym, except that you got one more hint because it has been used in a sentence. So it is easier than a synonym. In a synonym, you got to do a blind guess here you have here the word is used in a particular sentence what all you need to do is guess the meaning from the sentence that is given so it is much much easier than uh, the uh, synonym question let us look at a example wherever he goes the esteemed dr cnr rao is applauded for his path breaking research what does esteemed mean so i'll give you a couple of seconds to answer this question So you can make out from this sentence 
that esteemed means held in great respect so if you look at uh, look at the options that are there greatly admired comes closest wherever he goes uh, dr c n r rao he is esteemed which means he is greatly admired uh, among the options there you've got a uh, scorned scorned means is just the opposite scorned means you know uh, expressing disgust and anger so this is uh, contextual meaning uh, this is one question type which is close related to the synonym question type so we've seen three so far antonyms synonyms and contextual meaning now what is the preparation that you can do for these three question types now you can't go through elaborate word list at this stage uh, because however many questions however many words you go through there is no guarantee that the exam will contain words from the list that you've gone gone through so it makes no sense to look at a word list and start mugging up meanings of those words so what all you can do is uh, rely on your reading habits rely on the vocabulary you already have do some smart uh, answering in the uh, question type what you can do is narrow down if you can narrow down the options say from 5 to 2 then perhaps you can answer don't do a blind guess because penalty in the case of bitsat is very very high so one third will go for wrong answers so you shouldn't be doing any blind guessing if you can narrow it down perhaps then you can go for a guess otherwise better to skip the question altogether uh in our material in the material that is given by nano we have some exercises in all the three antonyms synonyms and contextual meaning and all our grant tests uh, and part tests will also contain questions in this question type so what you can do is go through them and get familiar with the question type other than that i do not advise any further preparation for these three question types let's now go on to the next one one word substitute here what happens is that a phrase is given and you are supposed to replace uh, the phrase with one particular word let us look at an example choose the one word that can substitute the given phrase read that uh, question and please try to answer i'll give you a couple of seconds to answer this yes the the question is a person who readily believes others this is the phrase that is given now you got to replace this phrase with a single word so what are the choices that are given here one is creditor now who is a creditor creditor is a person to whom money is owed for example he sold his house to pay off his creditors that is this guy who uh, owes some money to some creditors and he sold his house to pay off his creditors so that is not what we are looking for second is creditable creditable means commendable laudable okay may not be outstanding but commendable all the same for example though the team lost they put up a creditable performance that is how it is used but anyway not close to what we are looking at the third one credible what is credible credible means believable we found his story credible all right so that is how credible is used but still not the answer and finally we arrive at uh, credulous by a process of elimination we've already identified credulous is the answer but what is the what is the meaning of credulous credulous means people who believe anybody or anything for example some people are so credulous that they believe anything they are often easy targets for scam some time back we had this Nigerian scam and I often used to wonder who would fall for this Nigerian scam because you would suddenly get a email saying that you've got a 1000 of a 100000 pound jackpot and if you send us 1000 pounds we will release the money to you and all that I used to wonder who will fall for this kind of a scam but there are credulous people in this world who would fall for this scam and transfer this 1000 pounds for to those people and hope to get that jackpot so that is the meaning of credulous so this is what you should be doing one word substitute a phrase is given what you need to do is replace that phrase with a single word so how are you going to prepare for this uh, fortunately there are some very identifiable easily identifiable uh, one word substitutes 
uh, that frequently occur in these kind of exams. And uh, in the nano material, we have prepared an entire chapter on one word substitute. What all you need to do is go through the entire list and do the exercises. You also have these questions occurring frequently in our, all our grant tests and part tests. That will give you additional practice. The next question type is spelling. I don't have to describe in detail what it means. You'll have to find the right spelling. Uh, let's see how it goes. Uh, let's see an example. There are two ways in which this uh, question appears in these exams. One is the first type. Identify the word that is spelt correctly. Uh, you have uh, four options there. You'll have to find out the word which is spelt correctly. I'll give you a couple of seconds. Please find out the word. So is it a calendar? No, there is something wrong with that word there calendar actually you need to have a out there it's not e you need to have a second is cannibal cannibal the there is an extra b and there is one n less so it is actually c a n n i b a l who's a cannibal a cannibal is a person who eats human flesh then you have metal m e t t l e i think that is the right answer what is the meaning of metal metal means spirit and resilience, ability and determination. The team showed its metal in the finals. Next, you have precede. You can make out that it is obviously wrong. You've got a, you got one more extra. There's, a, there's an extra e out there. So precede. P R E C E D E. What is the meaning of the word precede? Precede means something which before, which comes before something else. For example, M S Dhoni preceded uh, Kohli as the captain of the Indian cricket team. The second type of question is identify the option that gives the correct spelling. So this, there is a single word that's given and it is spelt in four different ways. You got to find out where the word is spelt correctly. So in the first one, you've got a single C. So that is not right. In the second one, there is a single M. Again, this is not right. Here you have an A that is not right. So if you see the correct answer is D. So spelling, what is it that you need to do? Uh, there are some common exercises. Uh, there are frequently uh, misspelled words. We made a list of that. And in fact, our first chapter in the nano material is on spellings. So what you need to do is spend some time on those uh, list of words. Uh, be thorough with all of them. And uh, most of the questions will be from that particular uh, chapter. So you'll be familiar, you'll become familiar with those questions. Let's now look at the next question type, which is called homophones. Now, what are homophones? Homophones are words which have similar pronunciation, but are spelled differently, and they also have different meanings. Let's see some examples. Uh, fill in the blank with the appropriate option. Let's look at this. The actors had to shoot the dash three times and you've got two options out there. Scene, S-C-E-N-E and S-E-E-N. That's a fairly simple question. Obviously, the answer is scene. The next one, the next two questions, people often get confused uh, with this. So it's a choice between weather, W-E-A-T-H-E-R and W-H-E-T-H-E-R. What's the meaning of uh, weather, W-E-A-T-H-E-R? It's actually a noun, which means a state of atmosphere at a particular place or a short period of time. Weather, on the other hand, W-H-E-T-H-E-R, on the other hand, is a conjunction and is used to express a choice between two options. So if you look at the second question, it's going to rain today. Rain has got something to do with weather, but the context in which the blank is, spaced, uh, is placed there, it is giving an option between two things, you like it or not. So therefore, we need to plug in a conjunction there, which is weather, W-H-E-T-H-E-R, and that is the right answer. On the other hand, if you look at three, the question number three, we are talking about the atmospheric condition there. The weather, W-E-A-T-H-E-R, on the weekend is supposed to be sunny. Therefore, the answer here is W-E-A-T-H-E-R. In this context, we should also look at uh, 
two commonly confused words. One is weather and the other is climate. People often um, confuse between the two. Weather is uh, the state of atmosphere at a particular place over a short period of time. That is what you got to keep in mind. Climate on the other hand refers to a pattern of weather over a long period. You can't say that the climate today here is sunny. That's a wrong usage, right? So here you can say today's weather is sunny. So that is so that is how you got to use the word weather. The next set of questions, let's look at that. Jumbled letters. Jumbled letters means here you have given uh, words, but the letters are jumbled. What you need to do is rearrange the words in such a way that you get a rearrange the letters in such a way that you get a coherent word. So let's look at a question here. In this question, a word is given in a jumbled form. Find the word. This is uh, fairly obvious. Uh, this is a simple one. You can find out that the as the word is actually thrown, T H R O N E. So the right on answer is four two four two uh, six. Therefore, the option the option that is there is B. So you don't have to look at the other uh, letters. You have to save time here. The trick in sequencing questions is trying to save, trying to guess uh, the answer with uh, as many less as much or less time as possible. So we have uh, eliminated just on the basis of the first three letters and that is what we should be doing. So uh, we have an exercise dedicated to the sequencing question and the uh, where we deal with the other parts of sequencing also. For example, uh, sequencing of words to form a coherent sentence and sentence sequencing. Uh, the first part deals with jumbled words, uh, jumbled letters. So you could look at the nano material and do the exercise on jumbled letters. The next uh, uh, question, let's look at the next question type. This deals with uh, the odd word. Now, what does that mean? Let's look at an example. All the words given below belong to a category except one. Identify the odd word. This is more a question on general knowledge and reasoning than on English. Um, ideally, it should appear in the logical reasoning section, but because it's part of the vocab section, let's deal with that here. Uh, here, what happens is that uh, you need to find out a pattern. Uh, you need to find, you need to group words uh, which fall into a particular category and find out the word which does not fit that particular category. For example, if you look at this, uh, A, B, C, D, E, you have arrow, axe, knife, dagger, and a sword. All of them are weapons. How are they different? If you look at axe, knife, dagger, and sword, all of them have to be used in close proximity, whereas an arrow can be used from a distance. Also, an arrow has a pointed tip. Axe and knife, dagger and sword, basically what they do is they cut. Uh, arrow has a pointed tip and it has to be used from a distance. So you can say that the odd word out here is the arrow. So how do you prepare for that? Do some uh, exercises. Uh, we don't have a dedicated exercise for odd word because you know these are all based on uh, plain uh, reasoning. Uh, all our uh, mock test as well as our uh, part test and grant test contain questions on odd words. Also, we will encounter some kind of odd words in the reasoning section and I think that practice would be sufficient. Now, let us move on to the, the next and the final question type in the vocabulary section. And this analogy. What is the meaning of analogy? Let's look at an example. The question below consists of two words which have a certain relationship. Choose the pair which exhibits a similar relationship. So let's look at this example. Infrequent is to always. What is the relationship between these two? The two words are antonyms. They are opposites of each other. So what you need to do is look at the option where the words are opposites. Occasional and sometimes, both mean the same. Seldom and rare, also, they also mean the same. Often and frequent, they also mean the same. So all of these things are not the right ones because they are all 
synonyms. So answer here is sporadic is to constant. We've already looked at this example when we were discussing the antonym question where we've looked at specifically this particular word sporadic. So the answer here is sporadic is to constant. And how do you prepare for this question type? We have an entire exercise in nanomaterial on the analogy uh, question. So what all you need to do is do the exercise thoroughly and be prepared for the kind of questions and kind of relationships that you would find uh, in this question type. Okay, so that brings us to a close as far as the vocabulary question types are concerned. So what did we do today in this particular video? Uh, we first discussed the importance of BITSAT English section. Then we looked at the BITSAT English syllabus. We looked at the four components, which is basically vocabulary, comprehension, composition, and grammar. Uh, and today, in today's session, we discussed uh, elaborately all the nine question types in the vocabulary section, vocabulary subsection, you can say. So in the subsequent video, we will explore the other question types uh, in the BITSAT uh, syllabus, namely comprehension, composition, and grammar.